So if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up, leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So as you listen to this story, you can take a moment to close your eyes. And I don't know whether you'll drift asleep faster with the sounds of my words, with my voice, or perhaps with the spaces between my words. And as you drift comfortably asleep, so I'll just tell you this story in the background. A story about a dog and his human companion. And the dog and his human companion are out walking one day. They're walking through the countryside. And the dog can smell a wide variety of smells. can sense far more than his human companion, can feel the way each footstep feels as he walks through grass and how it changes when he walks along mud paths and how the sound changes when walking out in the open compared to walking through woodland and the dog and his companion are out walking towards a lake and the dog knows where they're heading because they've been there many times before and as they walk so the sun begins to set and while the sun is setting, the dog can notice the way sounds begin to change around them. The way some animals seem to be going to bed, going to sleep. And other animals seem to be becoming more active. And after a little while of walking, They arrive at their destination. They arrive at a lake. And the dog's companion sets up a camp on the edge of that lake and goes off in search of some firewood. And while the companion's off in search of firewood, so the dog starts sniffing around, running around, running down into that water, splashing through the water of the lake, excitedly running back on shore. And the dog wants to play, the dog wants to chase a stick or a ball or chase something so the dog tries to get the companion's attention and the companion who's collecting firewood picks up a stick and throws it off into the water while they carry on collecting the wood and the dog turns around and bolts out towards the water leaping off the side into that lake with a splash, swimming along and getting that wood, swimming back to the shore, feeling the way the paws push through the water, the way the fur feels as it moves under the water, running out onto the shore carrying that wood, bracing all four legs and then vigorously shaking 
to get the excess water off. And then taking that wood to the companion. And while the dog's rushing around excitedly, so the sun continues to set. And as the sun sets, so the light begins to change and the colours reflecting on the lake begin to change, becoming redder when you look in one direction and bluer when you look in the other direction, being aware of the smoothness of that water. And the owner, the companion, throws the stick again and the dog runs off again and the companion prepares a campfire lights the campfire and the dog returns and can hear the crackling fire can see the way the Flames are flickering and dancing, the occasional popping and spitting of sparks. And the companion sits down and appears to begin to relax. And the dog initially wants to play with the stick a bit more, but the companion is just sat there, wanting to relax. So the dog ends up sitting next to them. And as the dog sits next to them, so they reach over and they start to stroke the dog's back, stroking by its neck. And as they stroke, so the dog begins to calm down and relax. And while the dog calms down and relaxes, their breathing begins to slow. They begin to pay more attention to the crackling fire, to the slight breeze, to the sight of stars appearing in the sky. As the sun sets lower and lower over the horizon, and the moon begins to rise. And the water of the lake changes from reds and oranges to almost looking like it's covered in jewels with twinkling white light from the moon reflecting through that lake. And the companion cooks up some food on that campfire. Gives the dog some of the food, eats some of the food for themselves. And is really just enjoying the evening as it gets later and later. And then, after eating, the companion goes into a tent and the dog lies down near the tent, feeling the warmth of the fire, hearing that crackling, feeling the breeze, breathing calm and relaxed, and drifts off asleep. And while the dog drifts off asleep, so the dog begins to dream. 
And as the dog begins to dream, they find themselves running through a meadow with tall grass on a summer's day. They can feel the breeze fill the way the tall grass brushes against them as they run through that meadow. And the meadow goes up and down undulating over hills. They can see blue sky, white wispy clouds. And they run and bounce and jump and pant. And after a while, they see a brick wall and a brick bridge going over a small stream. And they see someone sat on the brick wall by the brick bridge. And they go over and they sit at the foot of that bridge. They sit in front of that person. And the person begins to talk in a calm and relaxed way to them. And they sit there politely panting, wondering what the meaning is of the words that person's saying, as that person seems to calmly and kindly be talking to them. And they don't understand the words, but they can sense the feelings while that person's talking. They can sense the way the person's talking. They can sense the non-verbal behaviours. They can't understand the words because they're just a dog. But they can understand the non-verbal communication. The way that person has their shoulders relaxed. Their facial muscles relaxed. The way their eyes are smiling the way they're breathing calmly, the way their arms are rested and their hands are rested. And they can read this non-verbal behavior and they know this person's safe, calm, friendly. And the person reaches out towards the dog with his palm upwards and then as he moves his hand past the dog's head, he turns his hand round and he starts to stroke the dog firmly and gently on the head. And the dog allows this to happen, feels a sense of connection, of calmness. And while the man's stroking the dog's head, the dog begins to get this idea that something's being communicated somehow, almost non-verbally, almost like thought to thought, that something is being communicated about a lost land, about somewhere he needs to go. And so the dog begins to internalize this message, this thought to thought message about a lost land, about having to alter time and help the people of that land. And that somehow it has something to do with his past. But the dog doesn't know what. And the person removes their hand, sits back on the wall. 
and gestures for the dog to cross the bridge. And so the dog crosses the bridge and starts running along the path the other side of the bridge and then runs off into a meadow and carries on running through undulating hills up and down through that meadow. Unsure exactly where they're going what they'll find and how they'll know when they've got there. And so, as that dog runs, they approach some woodland and they walk into the woodland and notice that it's darker in the woods, that the sounds have changed. They can hear the rustling leaves. They can feel the subtle breeze. And they wonder how they're going to find a lost land when they don't even know where this lost land is. They just know it's somehow in this direction. So they carry on through the woods. And they get to the other side of the woods and they come out of the woods. And so far everything seems normal. They don't see how they can find a lost land when a land is unlikely to be lost if it's in walking distance of where they were. And as they continue walking, they see a lake in the distance. And they walk towards that lake, noticing how calm and smooth the lake is the way it reflects the colours of the sky. And as they arrive at the lake, so they decide to jump into the lake and go for a swim. And so they run towards the lake they launch themselves off the bank into the water. And as they splash down into the water, the strangest thing happens. They pass underwater, but they don't resurface. They find that they land on the shore of a different land. A land that looks familiar in some way, but they've never seen it before, never experienced it before. And they wonder whether this is the lost land, this land that can only be found through the lake. They don't know why them jumping into the water meant they arrived here, whether that would always happen or it was just a one-off but they assume here is where they're meant to be right now. So they continue to explore and they start exploring this land. They see a path and they start following that path. They don't know quite where it's going to take them, what they're going to discover or what it is they have to do. And so they follow the path into some woodland. Only this woodland has a different sound to the previous woodland. There's something about its silence. That there is still some sound there. But they have this feeling of it being silent. And they walk through the woods. 
and they find themselves feeling so calm and relaxed, feeling this is such a peaceful place with this silence, feeling that the silence is helping them to drift deeper and more relaxed inside. And they don't know where they've got to go. But they start to pick up a scent. And it's a curious scent. So they decide to explore it. To follow that scent. And see where it leads them. And as they follow that scent, they eventually start to hear sounds, hearing sounds of people milling around, sounds of metal, clinking on metal, all different sounds of hustle and bustle. And after a while, they find themselves approaching what looks like an ancient village. And there's some kind of building in the centre of this village, almost like everything is built around that central building. So they walk down towards that village. They don't know whether this is the lost land and whether this is a lost village that they need to find or what it is they need to do. And they enter the village and they see people working, selling on stools, cleaning clothes, getting some food. They see different animals, like chickens and other animals running around. And they walk through towards that central building. And eventually, after a little while, they arrive at the central building they find that the entrance to it are locked. And they walk around the outside and they can't find any way in. So they decide they have to think about how they get in. They walk around the outside. They look up at all the different buildings. And they decide they can climb up onto the roofs of some of these buildings if they just back away from the centre a little. So the dog backs away, climbs up onto the buildings and then sprints across the buildings, jumping from building to building and eventually jumping over the wall into that central building. And once inside the central building, the dog notices how quiet it is in here. And the dog carefully walks around, exploring, following its nose. And there's very few people in this area. And the dog notices that the way this building is laid out is a wall around the outside with gates. And then the building is in like a U shape around a central courtyard. And right in the very centre, exactly in the centre of the bit of land, is a clock. And the dog remembers something about time and walks up to the clock 
and sits down in front of the clock watching those hands and the tall stone clock appears to be just ticking smoothly through time and the dog watches those hands as they tick through time and while watching those hands tick through time The dog's attention begins to become more focused, narrower and narrower, until eventually everything around the peripheral vision begins to fade away. The only thing left is those hands ticking. And so the dog watches those hands ticking away, becoming more absorbed deeper and deeper in the experience. And then as everything around the clock face begins to fade away, so the clock face begins to warp and alter as well. almost like a wormhole forming, almost like all of reality is twisting and bending around that centre point. And the dog keeps its gaze on the clock face as everything warps and twists until eventually everything starts folding back the other way. And the dog shakes its head as it comes out of a reverie and looks around and is surprised to see how everything has changed, how the house is no longer there, the village is no longer there. There's just this clock stood in the middle of nowhere, all around in all directions. It's just countryside and some woodland meadows, undulating hills, and right in the center, that stone clock ticking away. And the dog is curious about this, curious about what's happening, where it is, where the village has gone, And the dog starts walking around the clock, looking around left, right, up, down, behind itself in front. And then off in the distance, the dog hears a weird kind of growling sound. They're not scared by this growling sound just intrigued at what it might be. And so they decide to go in search of it, still trying to solve this mystery. So they go in search of that growling. And there's no paths to follow. They just have to follow their nose and follow the meadows, walking up and over hills, walking through woodland, going on a search for that growling. And after some time, searching through the meadows and walking through the woods. Eventually the dog notices that the hills climb higher 
into mountains. So the dog starts to climb those mountains, follow those mountains up higher and higher. Noting how that occasional growling is closer now than it was before. And they notice the way the temperature changes as they get higher into the mountains. And they're really happy that they've got the fur they've got to keep them at a comfortable temperature. And they climb higher and higher into the mountains. And they start to hear this flapping sound. Almost like the sound that big birds make as they take off. and then high up in the mountains. The dog sees these dragons flying around over the countryside below. Some flying around and landing in the mountains. And the dog doesn't feel threatened at all by these dragons. Just feels that this is a land of dragons. Perhaps this is a time of dragons. And so the dog goes in search of the nearest dragon. Wanting to communicate with that dragon. Perhaps finding some answers for the quest that they're on. And after a while of walking through snow, climbing mountains, feeling that cold wind on the face and the fresh air in the nostrils, the dog sees a dragon stood just in front of him. And the dog walks over towards that dragon. And the dragon notices the dog, lets out a powerful breath of warm air. Like a burst of warm air from the nostrils. And the snow between the dog and the dragon melts in that powerful warm blast and the dog walks closer and closer and the dragon and the dog just look at each other and then somehow they can understand each other almost like they communicate telepathically and the dragon communicates about how this is a land dominated by dragons. Way before man appeared on the land. After dinosaurs, but before man. And these dragons know what was, know what is, and know what will be. And the dragons talk about how man needs dogs. But man isn't clever enough to realise this. Man is too self-centred, too self-absorbed. Believing they're able to do everything themselves. And the dragons communicate that this will be man's downfall. And that what's needed is a connection to be formed. And that connection doesn't happen 
So the job the dog needs to do is to facilitate that connection happening. To connect a man with a wolf. And to realise that the wolf isn't a dangerous beast, isn't a competitor for food, but can be a companion. And that if that connection can be formed, then the ancestors of that wolf will become companions of humans who will help them in many ways. But the path that things are currently taking, that meeting doesn't happen. So the dog realises what it is they need to do. They need to connect man and wolf. But given they're in the age of dragons, they don't know how that'll be possible. And the dragon looks over at a cave at the back of the mountain behind him. And the dog walks to that cave, walks through the cave, and finds themselves walking out of a cave in another time, in another place. And they know they need to somehow connect man and wolf. And given their experience that they have had, they're aware that somehow they must have just travelled through time again. So the dog roams around, listening out and smelling out for other dogs or wolves and listening out and smelling out for humans. And after quite a while of roaming around, of walking through forests, walking through dense woodland, walking over tall hills and into valleys, The dog finds a pack of wolves. And goes over and talks with those wolves. Talks with them about how they can create a relationship with man. And they're sceptical because they see man as something that attacks them any time they go near. And the dog explains that they're destined to be together. They're destined to be companions of each other. And so the leader of the pack goes with the dog to seek out a human to form that first relationship. And they explore around the area. And the dog explains that humans will follow the water so they find their way down to a river. And they start walking along the edge of the river until eventually they see a young human and the human is trying to catch some fish and the dog tells the wolf to cut the fish off to help catch the fish for the human. 
And the wolf thinks, but they need to eat as well. They should catch the fish for themselves. And the dog explains that if you can create a relationship, you'll have more food for each other. You can work together. And the wolf had never tried this before with a human. And so cut off the fish, stopping them being able to escape, allowing the human to catch that fish. And the human saw what had happened and didn't know how to react, didn't know whether to be scared of the wolf or grateful to the wolf, whether it was intentional or maybe the wolf was trying to get that fish for themselves. And then the wolf helped again and again. And the human began to realize that the wolf is helping. The wolf isn't just badly attempting to catch these fish for themselves. And the human throws down a fish towards the wolf and the wolf picks it up and has that fish. And then a bear comes out of the woodland and starts charging towards that human. And the wolf runs and jumps in front of the bear and growls. And the human jumps back and starts running out into the water and across that river. And then the wolf makes chase after the human. And the human realizes the wolf put themselves on the line to help. And that they managed to stall the bear long enough for the two of them to get safe. And the dog watches from a distance as this wolf and this young human begin to interact in a friendly way. And they know that other humans won't at first realize that this connection is valuable. But the dog watches for a little while As that wolf at first helps that one human and then the wolf and their pack start helping the humans in this little settlement. They help to alert the humans to potential threats approaching the settlement alerting the humans faster than the human senses can pick up, being able to recognize predators from the sense of smell before they come into sight of the humans. They're able to control the few livestock that the little settlement has with them. They are able to help carry things. They are able to help with hunting. And what this little settlement of humans realizes is they also make great companions. That it's like you have company when you're out on a hunt. It's like you have company when you're at home alone.
and the dog watches and realises. That this looks like it'll be the start of a wonderful relationship. That these wolves will become calmer, be less aggressive so quickly, become more trusting of humans. And over the many, many years, the relationship will improve and get built upon. And so the dog begins to find its way back towards that cave. Hoping that its work here is done. And it finds its way back towards the cave, walks through the cave, finding itself up high in that snowy mountain. Seeing the dragon just chilling there. And the dragon and the dog communicate with each other. And the dragon lets the dog know that they've changed the course of history. That in the future when humans arise... That event will happen. Humans will talk about it, will share the knowledge, will share the strengths of having a companion. And that will continue through history. And the dog's curious about what happened to the dragons, because the dog knows in the future there isn't any dragons. But the dragon doesn't answer. And the dog doesn't know whether that means the dragons are still around in the future or not. And the dragon eventually just lets the dog know that everything turns out as it should. And the dog starts finding its way down that mountain. And finding its way back through the countryside and forests, through dense woodland. And then back through all the meadows, finding its way to that clock. And the dog sits down in front of the clock, watches as those hands turn, keeps the eyes on those hands as they turn, notices how the peripheral vision begins to disappear. Tunnel vision sets in, and then everything begins to swirl and turn around that clock face and then unswirl and turn the other way. And as reality comes back, they find themselves sat in that old location with that U-shaped building. And they start to find their way out of that building jumping up and over the wall, finding their way back to that bridge, where that wise person tells them that they've done a great job, and they don't understand the words but they understand the non-verbal communication that lets them know they're being told they did a great job, that they've changed the course of history. And then the dog 
started heading back. And at some seemingly random point, they leapt into the air and found themselves exiting the water and landing on the shore, as if they've just leapt out from under the water, landing on the shore of that lake. And they started walking back along. And they realized that time was still a bit jumbled. As the past, the present and the future were all merging. As they saw that wise one again and realized they'd already spoken to him. And he just smiled. And the dog realized that there's a ripple through time and space. And that dog is walking back to the present at about the speed of that ripple in time. Keeping aware of the changes they've made because they're just ahead of that reality. So some bits get jumbled and scrambled. And yet the whole experience is comfortable. And then after a while, they wake up feeling the warmth of the morning sun, hearing the sounds of morning birds, the lapping of the lake, and their companion preparing some food in a metal container. And they start thinking to themselves about this experience. As their companion comes out of the tent, they start thinking to themselves. While he's heading over with a little bit of food and he puts it down in front of the dog, how its only experience has been that dogs have existed and been companions of humans. And it tries to work out whether this was all a dream, or whether something really did just happen. And the dog starts thinking it's most likely just a dream. But it felt incredibly real. And the dog thought about the fact that if it was real, it means that it was inevitable, that they were going to be successful. Because the future is what it is, the present is what it is. Memories of the past are what they are. It doesn't change from moment to moment. So for the dog to have grown up as a dog, for dogs to be companions of humans, the only option is that whatever happened in the past happened successfully because if it had failed, then that would be the future. And the only memory the dog has is of one line of reality. And the dog thinks to themselves that it was obviously just a dream. But as they think that, they see a dragon land on the other side of the lake and look over at them. And they pick up almost this telepathic communication of the dragon letting them know it was all real. The whole experience did happen. That this future they've grown up knowing is because of this one moment in time where they went back 
and created this course of reality. And then the dragon launches itself back up into the air, swoops left over the trees and vanishes. And the dog turns to the food placed in front of it, eats that food, while its companion pats it on the head, gives it a stroke. And they spend the day down by the lake as they had done many times before, catching some fish, going for walks, enjoying their time together. And then at the end of the day, the companion goes into their tent again, settles down for the night. The dog goes to the tent, pokes its head in the tent as if to ask if it can come in as well. And the companion moves aside slightly, pats the ground, and the dog walks in and snuggles down. And the companion starts stroking their back, gently. And the dog feels that gentle stroke on the back, and feels the way it makes them comfortably drift off asleep. So as you listen to me and begin to drift comfortably asleep, I don't know whether you'll drift asleep more with the sound of my voice, or the words I use, or the spaces between my words. And as you comfortably drift off asleep, I'm just going to tell you a story about a dog. And this dog would get really excited when its owner was around. But when its owner wasn't around, it would get bored. It would be plodding around, waiting. Unsure what it can do for fun. And while the owner was out one day, the dog decided to wander into the garden and the dog was having a little wander round the garden and he would sniff one thing and then another, sniff at different plants, pick up different scents and the dog liked the feeling of the grass under its paws. and would occasionally flop down onto its side and rest on the grass. And then the dog continues its journey, wandering around the garden trying to think what to do. And as the dog wanders down the garden, it approaches the pond in the garden And it can sense the smell of the pond, of the fresh water. And it has a drink out of that pond, of that fresh water. And the dog pops its paws up on the edge and looks into the water, watching with curiosity at the fish swimming under the water. And it notices how the fish seem to move and vibrate and pulsate as the surface of the water waves.
and then the dog hears a strange sound that it's not heard before. And he looks around trying to find out where this strange sound is coming from. And he sees that among some flowers at the far side of the pond is a frog. Only the dog doesn't know it's a frog because the dog's never seen a frog before. And the dog watches with curiosity, seeing this little thing sitting there with its chin moving in and out as it makes a noise. And then the dog gets startled at this frog jumping and landing somewhere else. And the dog thinks, wow, that was incredible. And the dog's really impressed by this weird creature that's small and yet it just seemed to jump miles. And the dog became fascinated watching this frog. And then saw that frog go quiet and motionless. And then suddenly it fires its tongue out and catches some food. And the dog's deeply impressed watching this frog. And the dog tries to creep around the pond, wanting to get closer to that frog. And the dog thinks that it might scare the frog away, so it tries to do so really quietly, almost walking on tiptoes. And the dog continued watching that frog as it hopped around from place to place. And as the dog continued walking around this pond, it thought to itself about how this pond is like its own little private oasis. Because there's little archways, there's a little bridge that goes over part of the pond. There's some really wide green leafed plants that create some shade. There's some tall grassy plants that the dog can run and hide in. And around this pond was like a whole other world compared to the rest of the garden which was boring and rectangular, with flower beds down either side, with regular plants planted, the occasional shrub in the middle of the garden, and short mown grass. And the dog liked the rest of the garden. It was great for running around in and playing in but it didn't have a feeling of adventure like this area had, where it was like a whole other world. There was this frog, there was butterflies, there was a whole host of different animals, different birds would land next to the pond, would have a little drink, Sometimes they'd jump in a little shallow area where they'd wash. And none of this sort of thing happened anywhere else in this garden. This whole area gave an abundance of life, of activity. And while the dog wandered around the pond, it started 
feeling sleepy. And this dog regularly felt sleepy. It started feeling sleepy. And it curled up under one of the wide green leaves. It could feel the breeze on its fur while it's out of the sun, just in the shadow. With its eyes closed, it could still hear that frog making a noise. And he imagined to himself that it was probably moving its chin in that funny way. And the dog began to drift comfortably asleep. And as the dog fell comfortably asleep, so it began to drift into a dream. And it dreamt about a nice summer's day that its owner was there. And it dreamt about this summer's day with its owner there. And the owner was stood in the garden chipping away at something. The owner was stood in the garden, chipping away at something. And it looked like just a block of rock. And the dog was imagining this time and dreaming about this time that had happened the previous summer. And the dog didn't know why this is what they were dreaming. But they enjoyed their dreams of spending time with their owner. And they were just sat watching with curiosity as the owner hammered and chiseled its way around this rock, knocking out bits of rock here and bits of rock there. Starting at the top, knocking this rock down so it started to be a bit more curved. And then starting to chisel away further down. And then the owner would stand back and have a little look. And would get its hands and hold his hands in a certain way and have a look. And then would go back and chisel away a bit more. And then look at the back and look at the front and the left and the right. And would then chisel away a bit more. And then gradually over a long time, that rock began to resemble what looked like a person. And the dog was impressed because the dog thought it was just going to look like a lump of rock and hadn't seen that there was a chance it was going to look like something different. The dog didn't realise what the owner was doing. And the owner chiselled away and chiselled away. Until eventually there was this beautiful sculpture left. And the dog was so impressed that the owner had done that. That the owner had been that dedicated and taken all that time to chiseling away and chiseling away, to just bashing on a rock, and yet ending up with something that looked so beautiful. And the dog knew that now that sculpture stands near the pond. And the dog was thinking about how that sculpture kind of represents the owner. Because the owner put so much of themselves into it. But the dog didn't know why they were dreaming this here and now. And wondered what it was they were supposed to learn from this dream. And after a little while, the dog felt a bit drowsy but a bit wakey and started drifting back to wakeful awareness.
and thought, oh yes, I'm asleep. I was asleep under this nice shaded leaf. And the dog wandered out from under that shaded leaf, put its paws back up on the pond, looked across the pond to see if it could see that frog. And it saw the frog and saw the frog moving its chin, making that noise. And the dog felt a smile before then popping its feet down and carrying on around the garden. And the dog went to the area that its owner's children went and played in. And the dog jumped up a ladder, jumped up the steps, got to the top of the steps and walked along a little platform area before launching itself forward into a slide and it slid down that slide and flew off the end and then excitedly ran around and back to those steps and then along the platform and jumped down the slide again sliding down that slide and the dog did this a number of times and then found something really strange happened. The dog felt a slight tingling and noticed somehow its fur was standing up on end. And it decided it would just wait a moment before going back on the slide. Maybe it had just been on the slide too many times. And the dog had a little wander round while it waited and as it went near a metal railing attached to the slide it suddenly felt this little electric shock that confused it. And it wondered what had just happened. And it found the tingle a bit funny. The dog found it amusing that something about being on the slide like that had made it electric. And so the dog carried on around the garden. And it walked into the flower beds. It knew that if its owner was here, its owner would tell it off. It's not allowed in the flower beds. It has to stay on the grass. But that just made it even more exciting to go in the flower beds when your owner's not there. And it walked through the flower beds. It liked the sensory feel on its nose of all of the smells, all the different smells of all these flowers. Each one beautiful itself, but together they created something even more beautiful. And the dog brushed past the flowers and walked through those flowers. And it wondered how much time it's taken up, how much longer it has to wait until its owner gets home and it can go and play and go for a walk. And the dog continued its journey around the garden. And as it walked around the garden, he could see a ball in the garden. And so it ran over to the ball and headbutted the ball. And the ball bounced off, hit the fence and bounced back into the garden again. And the dog ran over to the ball again, hit it with its head again. The ball bounced off again. And the dog ran after the ball and hit it again and again and again. And then after a while it got bored playing with the ball. It wasn't as much fun as when someone else plays with you. Well, 
and the dog went back to see that frog. It found the frog the most curious thing in the garden. It was something it hadn't seen before. And the frog jumped and landed in front of the dog, and the dog jumped, but remained as stationary as it could. And the frog and the dog looked each other eye to eye. And the dog woofed at the frog, and the frog ripped back at the dog. And they looked into each other's eyes. And the dog felt a strange connection with that frog, as the frog then turned and leapt into the water. The dog almost felt a compulsion to follow and copy and leap into the water as well, and then it realised it likes water, but not really this pond water, not being in this pond. It didn't want to get soaking wet right now. And the dog started its journey back inside, walking back through the garden, heading back into the house. And when back in the house, the dog walked to a room that had this most beautiful, comfortable bed on. The dog circled around and relaxed down in the bed and started to drift comfortably asleep. The dog didn't know how long they had to wait for the owner to get home, but the dog felt he'd actually been quite active and was ready to drift comfortably and relaxed asleep. And while the dog drifted asleep, so it thought about that frog, and it wondered what the life of a frog must be, being able to leap long distances, making that funny sound while moving its chin, being able to pick up food with your tongue from a distance, the dog was thinking his tongue can't do that and thought that was a strange tongue that a frog has. And the dog continued to drift comfortably and relax to sleep. Knowing that it was looking forward to its owner's return. later on in the day. But for now it would dream about its day in the garden. It would dream about faraway places, dream about things it would like to do. And the dog relaxed drift and dream and fell asleep. And as you listen to this, I don't know if it'll be the sound of my voice that helps you drift off to sleep comfortably or whether it'll be the spaces between my words or whether it'll be the story itself that helps you relax and fall asleep. So with your eyes closed, as you listen to me, I'll tell you the story. And there was an owner who sat at home one day. And their dog was very intuitive. Their dog seemed to be able to have some level of insight into how the owner felt. And the dog noticed that the owner 
seemed to be down, seemed not to be feeling too good. When the owner walked around, they walked slowly. They didn't smile very often. They didn't seem very happy. And the dog wanted to know, how can I cheer my owner up? And so the dog went and sat on the owner's lap. with a big smile on his face, panting away, wagging his tail. And nudging the owner with his head. And the owner initially was a bit unresponsive, but then after a short while the owner started hugging the dog and started stroking the dog. And two of them sat there for a while, just hugging and enjoying some affection. And the dog wondered what else they could do to help their owner to be happier. So they decided to take their owner for a walk. They climbed down off the owner's lap, padded around on the floor, wagging their tail. They went and got their lead, which they felt seemed to be the sign of going for a walk. And they brought the lead to the owner, and the owner attached the lead. And they took the owner out for a walk. And they decided to walk the owner to the nearby park. And they walked quite fast to try to make sure the owner didn't have time to be stopping too often and thinking inside their head. They wanted to keep the owner on their toes. And in the park, they decided to play fetch the bull with the owner. They encouraged the owner to throw the bull while they ran and collected it and brought it back. And they knew the faster they could bring the bull back, the more attention the owner would have to play, pay to playing the game than to thinking in their mind. And after playing the ball game for a while, they went back to the owner and got the owner to walk with them deeper into the park. And they slowed down their walking as they passed other people who were also with their dogs. And the owner would say, all right. And others would acknowledge them and smile.
and when others would smile, the owner smiled back. And the dog noticed that this made the owner happier. There was something about getting fresh air, seeing other people, smiling at people and having people smile back. Not being able to have time to be inside their own head that seemed to make the owner happier. So the dog decided to keep the owner walking. They walked the owner through the park. And then down a road. And then into another park. And then over a hill. And down to the beach. And the owner and the dog walked along the beach. listening to the rolling sound of the waves as they landed on the shore, listening to the sound of the waves dragging some of the shore back out to sea, listening to the sounds of the birds in the sky, rustling leaves, other people talking in the background. The dog could feel the warmth of the sun on his fur. The owner could feel the warmth of the sun on their face. And the dog took the owner to a bench looking out over the sea. And it sat next to the bench and the owner sat next to him. And then the dog climbed up on the owner's lap, resting on the owner's lap, as the owner hugged the dog and gazed out over the sea, and felt the warmth of the dog's breath, the warmth of the dog's fur, the gentle touch of the dog's paws, And the owner could feel the dog breathing, could feel its heart rate. And it just felt so relaxing. Having this friend there for them. Then after a while, someone came over and asked if they could pet the dog. And the owner said, OK. And the dog smiled as this person pet the dog. And then someone else came over and did the same. And this person also struck up conversation with the owner about how they had a similar dog and about some of their interests and asked whether the owner liked sitting on the beach, what sort of things they liked and the owner and this person got talking 
and the person sat down on the bench next to the owner while stroking the dog's head. And the two of them sat there for hours, gazing out to sea, just chatting about their interests. The dog knew that if he could just get the owner out, just get the owner into situations where other people could approach them. Then maybe they'd get some company. Maybe they'd find something to focus on that's positive in their life. And the owner and their friend exchanged contact details. Before the owner got the dog and started walking home. And they just took a leisurely stroll home along the seafront. Taking in the sound of the sea. Before heading over the hill up the road, and to the park, and to the other park. And then eventually, after a long walk, they arrive back at home. And after settling in at home, the dog noticed how the owner seemed so much happier now. The owner had a smile on their face. And the dog knew that any time they need to help cheer up their owner, they just have to take them out for a walk. And as the story comes to an end, so you can just continue to relax and drift off asleep. Relaxing and drifting off asleep. Uh.